Thank you for coming. Uh, we're really excited about this, this uh, showcase. We're uh, having companies that are doing really innovative future food concepts, uh, pitching their companies. I, I sound like I have a lisp or something with this weird mic. Um, and then once you hear the pitch, the exciting thing, thing is you could try the food tonight at the happy hour. So you can check it out. So I love that. Uh, I want to welcome up the first startup, Base Food. Come on up. Hi, I'm Shun, the founder and CEO of Base Food. Our team at Base Food has one mission, making healthy and sustainable lifestyle accessible to all. How do we intend to achieve this? Through staple foods. The photo on the screen was a view outside of my office three years ago. Like many, I, like many in this room, I was a busy working professional. There were many good restaurants, but these were expensive or time consuming for busy working days. So I often ate pasta, burgers, and other staple foods. And then my health became worse gradually. At that time, I thought, what if there was a food product that was rich in nutrients, flavorful, and easy to prepare? I came up with base noodles. Base noodles is the world's first nutritionally balanced staple food. One serving of base noodles includes 29 grams of protein, 8 grams of fiber, and one third your recommended daily values of 25 essential vitamins and minerals. To achieve this, base noodles is made with over 10 nutrient-rich ingredients, including brown rice, seaweed, and flaxseed oil. Certainly, Best noodles is nutritious, but it was also important for me to retain the taste and convenience that have made noodles loved for centuries. I worked with chefs to ensure our noodles are gourmet. Unlike other nutritionally balanced foods, best noodles have been served at some of the world's top restaurants. Best noodles cook quickly, takes only two minutes to prepare, and pairs well with a variety of sauces, including marinara sauce, garlic, and olive oil. At the time, at the society today, the animal meat is being replaced with plant-based meats because plant-based meats are healthy, sustainable, and delicious. Base food replaces high carb staple food with nutritionally balanced staple foods. Because nutritionally balanced staple foods are healthier, sustainable, and just as delicious. Base noodles is sustainable because the ingredients are less burdensome to the environment. Best noodles is made with beans and whole grains and so on. So it is more uh, less burdensome than other high protein sources. If you eat less meat or fish, you can get balanced nutrition by eating nutritionally balanced staple foods. And the market of staple food is even bigger than the market of meats. In conclusion, Best noodles is best food fast product that can make healthy and sustainable lifestyle accessible. Thank you. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, I want to welcome up Burden of Proof, who's making a sparkling non-alcoholic cocktail. Hi, everyone. My name is Zane, and I'm the founder of Burden of Proof. Before I get started, I just want to thank the Smart Kitchen Summit and The Spoon for giving me the opportunity to meet you today. At Burden of Proof, we make functional alcohol-free cocktails 
This means that they have the complexity of an adult beverage, but also provide health benefits. We should be able to say, I don't drink, or I'm not drinking tonight, just as easily as we say, I don't eat meat, or I don't smoke. However, that's not the case. If you're not drinking because you have an important meeting the next day, you are on medication, you are allergic, you get bad hangovers, you are expecting, you want to be more healthy, or you just don't feel like it, there is social pressure to explain yourself. Our brand is called Burden of Proof because you shouldn't have to carry the burden of providing proof or reason for your positive choices. This is why we say our functional beverages lift your burden, hold the proof. We are creating a healthy alcohol adjacent option. So maybe you want to have one drink and switch to something else. Or maybe you want to not drink at all. Either way, you can still be socially included. So how is this different from a mocktail or any other non-alcoholic ready to drink option? For starters, mocktails are loaded with sugar. Other non-alcoholic ready to drink products are full of chemical preservatives or made with juice concentrate and juice extract for flavor purposes only. We provide flavor and function. We choose ingredients that have health benefits and use a cold process to protect the nutritional integrity of those ingredients, as heat is known to destroy flavor, antioxidants, and nutritional value. Specifically, we craft our beverages from a range of ingredients off our yes list. This includes vitamin-rich cold-pressed citrus, nutrient-rich purees, cold brew adaptogen teas, which are full of antioxidants, superfoods, think like makai berry or acai, and lastly, L-thionine, which is an amino acid found in green tea known to help regulate the stress hormone cortisol, thus benefiting your mood and overall alertness. With that, we adhere to a strict no list. That means no juice concentrates, no juice extracts, no added sugar, no sugar alcohols or any artificial sweeteners, no natural flavors, and we definitely do not use any chemical preservatives, nor do we heat pasteurize. We will be mixing our first flavor, which is a ginger margarita at our sample booth tonight, right in front of you actually, so you can see how it's made. Its ingredients consist of cold pressed lime, full of vitamin C, cold pressed ginger, good for your gut, a fiber rich date puree, a spice mix for complex complexity, and lastly, L-thionine, again, an amino acid from green tea, which is supposed to help regulate the stress hormone cortisol. That's all I have. Thank you for listening. Um, please come say hi to me. Again, my name is Zane, if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, my last slide is gone. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to our waiting list at burdenofproof.co. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Next up, we have Mighty Gum, a Seattle-based company. You don't have to travel. Yeah. Making enhanced chewing gum. Let's hear it. Hi. Uh, I'm Matthew Falcator, and uh, I'm the founder of Mighty Gum. So Mighty Gum is a line of functional chewing gum. So when I say that, usually people wonder, what is functional chewing gum? But the way I like to think about it is, chewing gum's been around for thousands of years, actually. And somewhere after we incorporated fresh breath and teeth whitening into it, the category just stopped innovating. And that's where I'm hoping to pick up. This is our first product. It's an immunity chewing gum. And I'll tell you what makes this gum work. But what's interesting is, I've taken what people consume today and just elevated the experience. What makes this functional? <clears throat> what makes this functional is the blend of adaptogens, botanicals, and vitamins that go into it. And, and as you'll see on the screen, there's nothing new here. Anyone who's somewhat plugged in or has been to a Whole Foods recently has seen all these ingredients. But what's interesting is it's in a new format. So ashwagandha, um, the benefits are, are right under it. But ashwagandha is something that's been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, astragalus and reishi mushroom have been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. Elderberry has been used for thousands of years in um, European folk medicine, as well as these vitamins. So most of us, when we go into the store, we get vitamins. Most of them are synthetically produced. Um, they're man-made. The vitamins that are in this gum are actually extracted from fruits, so it's easier for the body to process. So all I've done is taken a lot of stuff that exists today 
and put it into a new format, chewing gum. But why in a chewing gum? So there's a lot of benefits. The act of chewing itself prepares our body, like our body's designed to receive nutrition as a result of chewing. The act of chewing prepares the food, but it also primes the body to receive that nutrition. So that's why chewing gum, chewing is a format. But the other benefit is the inside of our mouths are actually lined with blood vessels. And these blood vessels take the nutrition of the nutrients in our food and bring it right into our body, into our bloodstream immediately, as opposed to swallowing a pill which sits in our gut for, it can take up to 60 minutes to actually get that uh, nutrition into your bloodstream. The other, the other thing is, it's kind of interesting here and it's, it's hard to explain it succinctly, but we've been trained to receive 100% of the nutrition that we need in the form of a pill. But if you think about it, you're getting 100% of what you need for 24 hours within a single instance. And as most of us know, our bodies can't process it, and as a result, we end up wasting it. Chewing gum as a format is really interesting in that you take small pieces throughout the day. And that's also the perfect vehicle to give you small doses of the nutrition that you need that you might not be getting from your diet. And the final piece is cold compression. So we're using a patented process to create this gum. Traditionally, gum is made using heat and moisture. And some of these botanical ingredients, when you incorporate heat and moisture, you degrade the quality and the integrity of them. So this process keeps the ingredients as pristine as they can be. So why does this matter? Um, the impact of chewing gum is maybe something we haven't thought about, but it's something that I've spent a good, time, good amount of time thinking about. 165 million people in the United States chew gum today. If we're able to elevate those chewing experiences, imagine the impact we can have on human health. And that's just in the US. The other problem is compliance. So as I mentioned, everything that's available, that's in this gum, in our immunity gum, is available on any Whole Foods shelf. But as most of us have probably experienced, after the first two weeks of buying that bottle of pills that you're super excited about, you forget about it. And it sits on your shelf and you forget. And a, sh and, and a supplement that sits on a shelf isn't helping your body. So this essentially is a solution to make an existing habit that you already have work harder for you. And at $3 a pack, this was something that's really important to me to make sure that it's accessible. I wanted to be within reach for the average man to buy, man or woman, or anywhere in between. Um, and then finally, our partnership with Vitamin Angels. So Vitamin Angels is this fantastic nonprofit. I urge you guys to check them out. But they're committed to eliminating infant mortality due to malnutrition from our planet by 2030. My goal is to help them do that sooner. So there's a lot more to this gum. I hope you guys will come by uh, our table and uh, check it out. And I actually have the gum, so you can try some. But um, thank you so much for having me. Great job. Thank you very much. Next up, we'll have New Foods, who's combining sustainably grown algae with food staples. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Devin. I'm a co-founder of New Foods, and I am currently skipping class to be here. <laughs> At New Foods, we combine food staples with algae to create delicious and nutrient-rich packaged meal alternatives that make it easy for people like you and I to eat sustainably. What does this look like? We use algae to make foods better. All of our products are based on three fundamental pillars. They must be nutrient dense. They must be made with the most sustainable ingredients possible. And above all, they must not lack in taste. This last section is a big issue, especially for the North American market, because algae has a stereotypical fishy taste. However, in our prototyping and research, we found that specific ingredient mixes and specific other forms of food can either overpower or even add value to this fishy taste. But why do we choose algae? We chose algae because it's the food of the future. It's two thirds complete protein by weight, high in iron, and a multitude of additional vitamins and nutrients. In addition, it's extremely sustainable to grow, allowing for up to 95% of the water used to be recycled, requiring no arable land, and produces much of the world's oxygen. With deforestation practices occurring constantly for agriculture, and with greenhouse gas emissions constantly getting put up into the atmosphere, we need foods like algae that pack a nutrient punch, 
without hurting the environment. My team and I met at the DDQIC Summer Incubator and were about three and a half months old. We quickly bonded over our shared passion for food and sustainability and are currently in the process of scaling up production for our flagship product, the Duty Bar, which is a high protein, low carb meal replacement bar using algae. It's also available for sample tonight if you'd like to come by and give it a try. Our next stage product is a high protein, low carb ramen noodle, and we expect this to reach grocery store shelves where we're based in Kingston, Ontario in about six to eight months. We've also established a prototyping deal with Uber Eats to set up a virtual kitchen in Kingston, Ontario so that we can validate and prototype iterations of future products like bars, alternative meats, and ramen noodles within one of our target markets locally. We're here to make algae mainstream and new foods is gonna change the way we eat. Thank you. Great job. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Orchestra Provisions, who's using cricket, responsibly sourced cricket protein to rethink food products. I want to just give a shout out to our judges. If you guys don't know, we actually have uh, companies represented in the front row here, our judging panel with Rabobites, Food Bites, uh, from Ra Food Bites from Rabobank, I apologize. Uh, and we have Blue 1877, Barilla, we have Food X, we have Mealthy. And we have the hatchery all up here, the star-studded row up here. You guys didn't know the judges. And so we're going to have you go next. Here you go. My name is Kate, and my life's experiences have led me to be the passionate founder of Orchestra Provisions. I live in Salmon, Idaho. I am a river guide, an outdoors woman, a mother, a food scientist. I have a master's in the science of nutrition from the National University of Natural Medicine. And I'm here to tell you today that there's a problem we must face. That is that the way we eat is destroying the earth that sustains us. The HWO projects that we will have 10 billion people by 2050. And while modern agriculture is grossly unsustainable, there exist food systems globally which we aren't utilizing, sustainable food systems, which we aren't utilizing here in the Western world, especially that of entomophagy. This is the practice of eating insects, and humans have been doing that since the beginning of time. It's even been proposed that we've been so evolutionarily successful because of our ability to forage for this protein source. While Westerners have an aversion to eating insects, 2.5 billion people worldwide never stopped, with large markets in Africa, South and Central America, and Asia. My solution, gateway bugs, and I've got the bug dealer for you. Moving forward, I'll be talking about crickets, which are a superfood. They have gram per gram more protein than beef, more calcium than milk, and more iron than spinach. They're wildly sustainable. They require a fraction of the land, feed, and water as other competing protein sources, and that includes plant protein. Crickets take 30 days to reach maturation without chemicals, hormones, or antibiotics. Eat really easy to incorporate into an urban, urban farming format for the future. So this might seem really obvious to you guys, and that's because it is. So we have to move past this aversion. So I introduce to you Orchestra Provisions Gourmet Cricket Seasonings. This is a baby steps approach to normalizing entomophagy. We've paired one of humans' oldest trade traditions of spices with the practice of entomophagy to create an approachable product you can't see, taste, or smell the crickets. We've created eight cultural blends so the user isn't pigeonholed into one use. You can use them multiple times a day and in any recipe. There are many target markets here, perhaps the most important being that of lifestyles of health and sustainability. There's a huge rising market in entomophagy globally and here in the United States. The U.S. market between the years of 2018 and 23 is a projected 25% growth rate, resulting in a billion dollar annual market. There are many products on the market today, but none face aversion like orchestra provision spices. And currently this product of spices doesn't exist in the marketplace. At orchestra, we're disrupting a mature market and cornering another one. And we are currently working on a protein powder which will have more sustainable impacts.
the product line will um, grow as the market grows. It will expand as the market grows. So we were founded in January of this year and have a unique opportunity for rural sustainable economic development. We source our crickets locally and have 11 retailers in three states, including the Boise Co-op in one of America's fastest growing cities, and locally, more rurally, in a really successful bakery where they've taken our chai space and spice and incorporated it into their pancakes, which have become wildly popular. This is a future foods product, but there's nothing futuristic about entomophagy. Insects don't have to be eaten whole. They can be used as an ingredient which fits our, our current food system's formula. Aversion stands in the way of this Western market developing, and Orchestra's gourmet blends are a solution. It is my hope to return insects to the modern kitchen where spices are familiar to everyone. This product grants access to circular and sustainable economies while returning power to the purpose-driven consumer. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Next up, we have Planeteer, who's fighting plastic waste with edible spoons. Hi, I'm Dinesh. Um, thanks, The Spoon and the SKS, for letting me be here. OK, before I go to the solution, let's begin the problem. Um, how many of us thought the few minutes of comfort that we have during eating our food can lead to the environment? That's the, solu that's the problem I had for the past three, four years, and that's the reason why we came up with a solution. Just to give you some basic statistics, 100 million, about 100 million pla single-use plastic utens utensils are used just in the United States. Across the world, it's more than that. And by 2050, there's more plastic than fish in the ocean by weight. So this is very important because, especially for the future generations, by the way, nature has a very amazing way to give us back. So it's going to give us back plastic later, either through fish or seafood or something else. And about 1 million seabirds die every year because of consuming plastic. This is kind of more, people are getting more aware of this issue. And this one, the, the one on the bottom, is very important because Part of my research for one year came up with this. 91% of the biodegradable and compostable plastic that is available now in the market do not get composted properly. So they are thrown regularly in the landfills where they do not get decomposed, or even in the oceans, they don't get decomposed. Even the 9% that goes into an industrial composting facility, there is proof from researchers saying that people are so greenwashed, they don't think about the product. Since the thickness is very hard, it can't be composted even in an industrial facility. People are getting more aware of it, so it's just kind of false marketing. People think, oh, I'm doing good for the planet, but they're actually not. So that brings us to incredible. Our goal is to replace all the plastic, single-use plastic cutlery with edible cutlery. So that's our spoon on the side. This is our plane. I'll come up with the more flavors next. Okay, let's get to the pep stuff. So it's available in two different shapes, eight flavors, and we also have a flavorless version because some people don't like to eat, get flavor out of the spoon, I guess. And they're vegan, they're all natural, they have one gram of protein per spoon, so it's healthy too. So imagine your kids eating their ice cream with a chocolate spoon and then eating the spoon after it. And carbon offset, okay. So this is a very interesting thing. One of my customer in California, they asked me a question. These are made in India. So I am spending through freight shipping from India to US. She put up a question. Aren't you, making, aren't you generating carbon footprint? That's a very, a very, very interesting question. So we are tackling that by planting 250 trees for every 100,000 spoons that we sell. In that way, we are going to make sure that it's zero footprint company. And uh, most famous question that we, uh, we get is, how long does it last? So it lasts for up to 25 minutes in a hot soup and 45 minutes in a cold desert. Our majority of our customers are ice cream shops. And by, uh, by the way, this is our pepper spoon, a pepper, black pepper flavored spoon. Okay, our evolution. It took some time. It's not easy to make a spoon that you can eat. So we did about 80 plus trials with multiple different molds. And right now, we are able to manufacture of 50,000 spoons per day. 
we sold about 1 million spoons across the world, about 250K of them in US and Canada. And I'm so happy not because of anything else, but because 1 million plastic spoons are less in the nature now. And we were voted best product in the Western Food Service Expo and the Eastern Restaurant Expo in New York. 70 plus customers are currently doing trials with us. That includes from food service, desert stores, and caterers. 20 plus recurring sales already, most of them in California, Hawaii, and New York. And three partners in progress from the major ice cream chains and all that. And this is our most famous chocolate spoon, which is in the desert shape, the smaller shape. What's next? We have prototypes of forks and straws already. You can come and see the prototype of a straw in the table, at the table. And we're also working on coffee stirrers. We observed that a coffee stirrer is used only for two seconds, just two seconds, and it's thrown away. Why do we really need it, first of all? But that, that's a question that I can't answer, but anyways. So I'm thinking, why can't we make a biscotti kind of stirrer? Just stir it and eat it. It's a good snack with the coffee. Okay, and my ask here is, let's coexist better. We deserve being an intelligent species. We deserve to make our planet a better place. And let's stop using single-use plastic. And obviously, help me spread the word. And we are actually scaling up. We are estimated about $600,000 for scaling up our manufacturing facility to make 1 million spoons per day. And that will bring down the cost to just 8 cents per spoon. And that's our team, my wife Sudeshna, me Dinesh, and my, 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 my boss in India is Krivel, he's my partner, and our sales champ is Jack, and our brand queen is Desiree. Thank you so much, and hope let's live a better life with the planet together. Thank you. Great job. All right, next up we have Route to India, who's providing healthy snacks made from Asian water lilies. Here you go. All right, I think we're ready. So, hey folks, it's crunch time. My name is Anita. I'm Nalini. And we are the co-founders of Route to India. Even this past weekend, millions of moviegoers were crunching on this stuff. Instead, they could have mindfully been munching on this. So, what is this? Yoga pops. <laughs> sound effect, pause for the sound effect. These are yoga pops, our first product made from the Asian water lily seed. So it's a popped water lily seed. It tastes a little bit similar to popcorn, but is way better for you. So, life is busy, but savoring moments just like this can reset and recharge us. At Rock to India, we believe snacking can be intentional. Our mantra is mindful munching, and our goal is to promote snacks and foods based on the principles of Ayurveda. Like yoga, Ayurveda brings about balance through food. If you're a fiery personality and you know who I'm talking about, then you eat foods that are cooling. But if you are an air personality like me, then you want foods that are grounding. And if you are a grounded, earthy personality like me, you need foods to perk you up. For North American consumers, Ayurveda is an emerging vehicle for personalized wellness, one that cuts way past all of these gimmicky fad diets that are out there into a 5,000-year-old science and approach to total well-being. So the way the snack came about, I was this stressed-out corporate executive who sought solace in my crunch. So I'd reach out for my popcorn and my potato chips while my partner, in the meantime, was following her passion as an Ayurvedic chef. And as part of my exit strategy from corporate, I'd say, can we please package your food? However, Ayurveda, nothing that is packaged, processed, and with preservatives is good for you. So uh, fortunately for me, two years earlier, um, we, Nalini received a James Beard grant and as part of the program, she would be doing these pop-up Ayurvedic dinners where she would serve these snacks as guilt-free bar snacks. And folks loved them and wanted to walk away with them. So I lucked out. Um, so a little bit more about what this is. So our super seeds come from the prickly Asian water lily flower. They grow in wetlands of, um, and ponds 
of northern India, but also other parts of Asia. But only in India do they hand beat them, and assert, at a certain heat and humidity, they pop. And we then roast them and spice them with Ayurvedic ingredients. And we do all of that here in artisanal batches in the US. And we currently have three flavors of our snack. We have a curry flavor, uh, a magic mushroom flavor, and a caramel jaggery. So, you know, these are actually, so when you think about things like uh, from a nutritional standpoint, they are non-GMO simply because they're self-pollinating, so you can't tamper with them. They're also grain-free, they're gluten-free, and they're chock full of nutrition. So everything from all the essential amino acids to magnesium, potassium, uh, minerals, and they have twice the protein, half the carbs of popcorn, and better yet, they don't get stuck in your teeth. And so from a sustainability standpoint, a single bushel of corn takes up to 5,000 gallons of water, whereas this requires nothing, because it grows in water, and it doesn't deplete the soil. So then who's our tribe? Who's liking our pops? Our snacks speak the language of millennials and Gen Z. Ayurveda especially makes that connection with ourselves, with nature, and with community. So it's really speaking to their tribe. They feel good mentally, physically, and emotionally. And 90% of first-time mothers are millennials. They love the snack for themselves, but they also love it for their kids. And it actually makes a great snack for kids, and the lunchbox will never come back empty, guaranteed. So let's talk just a little bit about our total addressable market. So when you look at um, the salty snacks category, that's pegged at about 27.7 billion back in 2017. The popcorn market at 2 billion, and expected to grow exponentially to 9 billion by 2023. We're targeting 1% of that at 20 million, and over a five-year period with a 30% profit margin, we're looking at about 6 million. In terms of our growth so far, we started our company 12 months ago, and we're also already making pretty good inroads. We're in over 50 doors nationwide, and our online repeat customer base is growing exponentially. Our growth strategy, we're uh, on target to hit 75,000 this year in revenues, and our growth strategy includes um, online retail expansion, but also, very importantly, product diversification. So I think with that, we'll invite you to come taste our snacks at 4 p.m. today. Thank you for your time. Finally, let's look at welcome up Sophie's Kitchen, who's making plant-based seafood. Come on up. Howdy. It's great to be with all you guys. You're really great, honestly. <laughs> um, so that's up there. I'm Miles Woodruff. I'm the CEO of Sophie's Kitchen. Um, our founder recently stepped back so he could focus full-time on starting a, an algae protein empire in Singapore. And we believe it's our corporate mission to challenge the status quo of food production, to um, make every meal healthy and nutritious and ethical, and also rocket us towards a carbon neutral uh, planet. And to do this, um, we are using plant-based seafood, because this year alone, our company will dispense over 100,000 tons of product that will directly replace the need to eat animal-based seafood and extract that wildlife from its natural habitat. So 10 years ago, uh, Eugene discovered that his daughter was allergic to seafood. And um, it shook his world. How, how, now he has to deal with a, a child who, who actually might die if, if she eats food. And so he had to find a way to, to safely feed his family. And um, when he started researching how to do that, he found out that there's actually heavy metals and toxins and uh, microplastics in all of our seafood now. And so it's not even actually just his family that has the problem, it's the world. And so he had to find a way to feed the world healthy seafood alternatives. And um, that's where uh, we get into um, me. I 
joined the company um, recently because I worked with Jane Goodall in the Congo. I had a manufacturer's rep firm. She told me to leave it and go live with chimpanzees. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> and after several years, uh, I, I left that um, just recently because I was facing poachers every day. I got a really good handle on what the actual environmental impacts we were facing from the ground level. And um, I needed to, to do something at scale, something really, really big. So I came back out of the jungle on this personal mission to really foster that change and to work on a healthy planet and healthy ecosystems. And the global seafood market is 171 million tons per year, which is about $362 billion per year. And my goal for the company is to capture 4% of that market in the next uh, 10 years. And the ecological impact of that, and the ethical if you're vegan uh, or um, concerned about the environment is massive, absolutely huge. And right now what we're doing is we're working on building out a team of equally passionate people that we can work with, that'll grow with the team. And this year, um, we're gonna be adding to this team even more. I mean, we have a lot of other infrastructure. This is just the core team. Um, and these are our ingredients. We use konjac and pea protein. And our food scientists found that with konjac, you could um, use other natural and good for you ingredients to create the texture of seafood that's almost seamless, that you can hardly tell that you're not eating seafood, if at all. And for eight years, we've been fighting, fighting to create this category. And um, now we're, we're finally at a place where we can, we can scale. And um, we're not yesterday's fish. We're a food tech company. And we have um, patents on several of our products that we make with our, our extrusion technology. And um, our R&D is such that when we have the funding, we can roll out a bunch of different products that I won't name here, but we're far uh, beyond the current uh, competition with our R&D. And so we think in millions of tons of seafood and wildlife that we're going to save. And we also think in keeping our investors and our retailers happy, and neither of those is a problem. And the good thing about our product is that the only thing our customers need to worry about is which of our good tasting foods they're gonna eat for dinner, because they can't tell the difference. And we, we wanna have delicious plant-based seafood be available to everyone everywhere. And so I, enjoy, I invite you guys to come join us uh, tonight at our booth and try some of our products and to join us on our delicious mission to, to spread this around the world. Thank you. Thank you. How, how about those startups? Were they great? Give them a big round of applause. That was awesome. So that's it. I was impressed with so many of these concepts. I, mean, I just love, I want to try everything. So I'm looking forward to happy hour. Five o'clock tonight. Happy hour sponsored by Microsoft in the, in the atrium or in the international room where all the kind of the networking tables are. Uh, be there, have, have some beer, have some wine, and try out their samples. And the judges can review it and then hand in the, the scoring sheet. So we will announce the winner tomorrow at lunch. So we'll see you guys all there. See you at the happy hour.